Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another color grading tutorial and today we're going to be working with the footage from red.com website and the camera we're going to be working today is a red dragon. And also in today's tutorial we're going to be working with DaVinci, actually not DaVinci, with the classic Asus. A couple days ago I think, I think it was a day or two ago, somebody left me a comment about that DaVinci Asus not as accurate I guess as Asus CCT. And it's my first time using Asus CCT so I'm going to give it a try and hopefully I'm going to do later on my own research and see what's actually the difference is. But let's give it a try. So Asus 1.0.2. Let's go to the color management and select our red camera. There we go and output Rec 709. Push save and we're good to go. So even by default that already look really amazing I mean just a simple conversion and you know it's pretty much Rex 709 but that by itself is like that's it we're done you know what I mean everything looks fantastic but let's you know let's polish it a little bit let's try to give it a slightly more interesting look and I'm gonna do another note I'm gonna be working with the second note right away and this note is going to be exposure. I'm not going to be doing the noise reduction. Um, I think I misspelled exposure. I'm not going to be doing any noise reduction, which is going to start working as is. Okay, so that looks really good. Okay, I'm looking at my separate false colors that I have actually special monitor that displays false colors but if you guys don't have that monitor there's awesome plugin by film by uh, actually time and pixel I was gonna say film and pixels I'm sorry by time and pixels it's called the false colors let's drop it and we pretty much get this awesome false color that represents our exposure so that way you guys don't have to look over here to figure out where is your car or whatnot you apply the plugin and you see everything visually on the screen. So really cool. But I'm going to remove it since I have a separate monitor for this. And as of right now, I, our exposure looks pretty healthy. It's actually a very, very cinematic shot. But, you know, let's give it a more interesting look. Let's give it more like a winter look, you know, the very cold. So... I'm going to create a new node. I'm just going to have empty node right now. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go in the color temperature and I'm going to start dialing down. I want it to feel very, very cold. I want to give that feeling the winter is coming. You know what I mean? Okay. And I think like this looks really cool. Let's check out everything before and after. Our exposure is great. And the color temperature is dialed in raw panel. So, okay. I really like where it's going. It's actually, I may warm it up a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy with this. Let's see. Something, something like that. Or maybe, maybe, maybe more. There we go. Let's do 4,000 to be even. All right. So, like, that looks great. And I created a node. I'm actually going to turn it to parallel mixer. And I'm going to start working on giving giving this thing more cinematic look. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create this thing and I'm going to call this car. And I'm going to change a color of this car. So I'm going to go to the curves, hue versus hue, and I'm going to pick blue. Just like that. And once I'm going to start moving, we can see that everything changes. Okay, so I want to give this car maybe a little bit a little bit teal look and along with the car we can see that everything else also changed which is slightly a problem because we don't want that uh, we can have one solution to track down the car and we can do that but there's easier solution and always like doing this I'm gonna call this one blacks okay and I'm gonna go into luma versus saturation I'm going to do a curve, basically desaturating everything that's on the bottom. Okay, so let's do something 
let's do something like that so let's check it out before and after before and after we kind of taking edge of the overall picture okay and in this note I'm gonna call this simply contrast just like that and I'm gonna introduce contrast with the slider okay so like that looks interesting we start getting a very interesting look and let me check before and after obviously big difference we muted a lot of colors and punch but it's okay because we're gonna get the look that we want so let's create another node convert it into layer just like that and in the layer in the top node right over here I'm actually gonna introduce a color so what kind of color do I want let's play around for example if we don't know let's play around and see what is out there okay so let's see okay like that I think like that blue looks kind of cool all right let's turn off the highlight at the bottom let's go right over here to RGB channel let's do monochrome let's tweak this bad boy a little bit for a puncher contrast just like this custom curve I want to have a bunch in the highlights preserve everything and in the layer mixer let's try two modes first one I want to try multiply which looks ridiculous and second one I want to do where's the soft light I can see there we go soft light okay so like that looks kind of strange I guess considering that this was our before and now we're kind of dealing with this crazy color but watch this if we're gonna start bringing back and basically playing with our monochrome we can start getting an interesting result so now we have a very monochromatic shot if we're gonna go back to this original and if we're gonna start playing with the color in the midtones in particular we actually start introducing very interesting monochromatic picture like that which also very cinematic for example this shot let's make it a little bit warmer like that looks very cool obviously it's all exaggerated it's all too much but if we're gonna dial it down okay just like that we get a very interesting almost bleach bypass look so let's check it out before and after I mean look how much more cinematic the whole thing got that looks absolutely fantastic I really really like it and even though I'm actually doing a slightly strange method I'm pretty much showing the concept of if you really have no clue what are you gonna do just by playing around with the parameters you can dial something that looks really good and pretty much get the look that you're looking for and this is just one of the examples I mean we obviously can introduce more different stuff and now let's see now let me create another node and I'm gonna call this blacks contrast and what we can do in this uh, I'm gonna go over here to the qualifier to the Luma okay and I'm just gonna be working okay with the darks just like that soft as usual eh, kind of let's do it like that not too bad and watch as I'm gonna start cranking the contrast can you see that check it out before and after before and after we start getting much more punch so I'm gonna do the same thing now with the highlights I'm gonna call this one high and let's go over here da -da 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 -da. let's let's make sure that we're doing actually I did opposite thing anyways doesn't matter I apologize for that but it's fine we're still doing the right thing we're still on the money okay pa -pa 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 -pa. let's take this thing off and watch the contrast looks really cool let's do a slight curve Oops. 
Okay. Let's do slight curve, just like that. A little bit. A little bit punch. Kind of like this looks cool. So let's check this out before and after. Before and after. So now we actually have a very interesting cinematic look. And obviously the car goes in the darkness. But if you guys watch my previous tutorial on animating keyframes, we can do something really cool. So I'm going to create another node and I'm going to call this a keyframe. Keyframe, just like this. And what I'm going to do right over here is I'm going to add a little bit of blacks, I guess, if you want to call it. Okay, so like that looks great. Obviously, way overexposed at the beginning, but that's the point. So if we're going to go over here in the keyframes, <coughs> okay, this is number 12. So I want my number 12 to be at zero. Okay. So I'm going to start, I'm going to click over here in the little square. That means we're animating right now. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click add dynamic keyframe. All right. So we're adding dynamic keyframe. And now as the car moving away from the sun, I want to do number one. Okay, so we added dynamic key. And basically, the car, we can actually move that key. Now the car sort of remains always exposed. And it also feels like the cameraman adjusting exposure as the camera moves. I mean, obviously, you can do a much better job than I did, you know, because it's tutorial, it's all quick. You can adjust the certain parameters of that, but you're getting the point. So if we're going to go back and check it out, this original shot, that kind of looks boring. And what it looks now, that is a huge, huge difference. So a few people ask me, why do we animate keyframes? Well, that's pretty much the reason. Again, you don't have to do as dramatic effect as I did. You know, it just for example, I'm playing around right now with all the parameters. This is pretty much steering the pot, what we call it in the color grading community. But basically, we have this amazing look. If we're going to take a look at before and after, completely different thing. Looks very cool and have a very high production value, especially if you're looking for something stylized. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. If you guys have any cool videos, send them over. I'm going to do more color grading tutorials. And possibly I'm going to start doing a little video logs also about color grading starting next week. And basically we're going to see what's going to happen. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you soon.